Houdini 19 is out, and with it comes a ton of new features. So I wanted to take a look at one of the more exciting features being Karma and Karma XPU, the new render engines inside Houdini 19. So they work a little bit differently. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to go about getting Karma set up inside of Houdini 19. So I just have a quick scene set up here that I was testing out new workflows on. You can either use the Solaris context, or if I pop over to the out context, you can drop in a Karma ROP and you get all of these settings in here. So under the hood, this actually is working through the USD context. If I actually dive in here, you can see that there is a LopNet with a bunch of stuff in here that is going to be pulling in your scenes into the USD context and doing different things in there, just basically bringing in your whole scene. So under the hood, it is USD, but it's not in the USD context, uh, which is the Solar Solaris kind of workflow inside of Houdini. I will be taking a look at that in the future here. So I do ha have a feeling that Karma is going to work a little bit better inside of Solaris, but for now the uh, Karma wrap works uh, pretty decently actually. So we're gonna take a look at that as well as you can see here, we have the render engine, the choice between CPU or the XPU, which is the cross uh, render of the CPU and the GPU. So we use both. Doesn't seem like it uses the GPU fully yet. It is still an alpha and there's a ton of things that it doesn't support, but it actually rendered out the scene that you saw at the beginning of the video. So it is production-ish ready in certain uh, circumstances. So feel free to test it out and use it. It is a ton of fun to play with. It is pretty quick, but uh, it's not, not fully there yet. So let's go ahead and kind of take a look at this. So the first thing that you need to understand with the Karma ROP is that it is going to be only using for XPU at least. There's only a few things that the Karma ROP will actually uh, pull into the materials. So the Material X workflow is going to be what you're using. The standard surface is kind of going to be your go-to. I haven't actually figured out how to use displacements yet with material material x this is my first kind of foray into material x but uh, i haven't figured out the displacements yet there is a displacement node for material x and it's got this purple out and if you look at the standard surface here there is no purple input here there is no displacement input if i do a material x surface one of these in here, gets this one. Nope, not that one. If I pull up material, and then the surface material, that's what it is. You can see that it does have the displacement here, but when I plug everything in here and I plug in a standard surface into this surface shader uh, input and the displacement input, if I were to actually render this out, which actually, let's go ahead and just show you how this works. I'm going to go ahead and just turn off all the grass in this scene so it loads a little bit quicker. But for getting your IPR up, you're going to be going into your out context for the Karma and clicking this Karma viewport. That will pull up, not that, not that either. It's like I closed out of it. Pull up this new window, which is a Karma kind of viewport. You can come to this perspective and go down to Karma and it will start rendering. Once it loads everything into the scene, give it a second. And once it's got all the textures in there, you'll see that we actually have this scene loading here. So if I just minimize that for just a second here and I go back into our actual ground plane here and I set our material to the new shader that we created, which was this surface material. And I pull up this Again, you can see that our ground has turned this white, uh, just base, like no material shader. And I don't really know why that's happening. I don't really understand why this material X surface material is not pulling in this standard surface. Uh, it looks like it should work, but it apparently doesn't. 
Um, so if you guys have any idea uh, why that is, please feel free to let me know because I would love to be able to actually use displacements. And I don't believe that is agnostic to the XPU. If I switch over to the CPU, I think this will have the same issue. Yeah, you can see it has the same issue there. But let's go ahead and switch back to the XPU because it is faster and take a look at some of the things in here. So our sampling, I haven't really messed with this. The limits, so this is the fuse limit is gonna be your like GI bounces, I believe. Um, reflection, these are like your trace steps kind of. And then your color limit, that's going to kind of work with your fireflies. Uh, you can lower that and you will get less fireflies. Let's just go ahead, set this material back to the ground material and pull that back up once it loads back in here. So if I set this up to like 10, you can see we get a bunch of these hot pixels, which you don't really necessarily want. So I can just set that to a lower value and you can get uh, those to kind of disappear a little bit and have better um, hot pixel removal with that. So if you're noticing in here, you have these distracting um, like outlines of all of the lights in your scene. So if you want to get rid of those, you can come to this little icon right here and get rid of those light guides because you probably don't want those distracting you while you're trying to work. Let's just make that a little bit bigger. And let's go to camera effects. So this is where you'll enable your depth of field. Still are using your camera settings in your actual camera to control all of these, your focal length, aperture, all that stuff like normal. And then you can just enable or turn off depth of field right there and get some nice looking results with that. Um, let's see, once I go into this image output, there are AOVs in here. You can render out all sorts of AOVs. I haven't messed with this yet just cause I haven't uh, really dived in super deep into this, but there are a bunch of AOVs that you can enable there. There is also denoising, so this is super, super nice. So if I want to get some nice looking results, let's actually, let's actually load in all of this grass geometry. And once it loads up, it'll load in here as well. I'm gonna go ahead and activate this Intel Odin denoiser. Uh, I think that's actually spelled wrong in here. I think it is actually the Odin denoiser. I think, I don't think it is, or maybe I'm just dyslexic because it's open image denoise, I believe. Uh, but you'll see as it starts to render out here, I believe it'll go to like 30% is what I was at earlier before it started to denoise. I personally like the Intel denoiser a lot better than the NVIDIA's AI denoiser. I think it works a lot better, but uh, that's just my personal opinion here. But uh, moving on here, you'll see it kind of denoise here as we go through our different settings. I haven't really messed with these values at all. Uh, deep image output, that's gonna be your deep, uh, yeah, your deep image output, I guess self-explanatory there. And then you have your bucket size you can set in here if you want to render out in buckets, but that only works for the CPU engine. It does not work for the XPU. So if I go over to this driver, this is uh, kind of grayed out here. We don't have the option to change that. And if I go ahead and change this over to CPU, you can see now we have the ability to switch it over to bucket if we want to switch it to a bucket render instead of the progressive render. And that works for rendering it for M play as well. Let's go ahead and just set that back. And then I haven't really messed with much else here, but it's kind of a, a quick overview of the Karma ROP and all the settings in there. If you need to refresh your Karma, just set it back to the OpenGL and then go back to Karma and it kind of refreshes things. It's the only way I've found to actually really refresh it. There might be another way in here, but I haven't actually tested that out. Uh, and then render region, I believe you can use this maybe. Maybe not. I haven't actually tried that until just now. So it looks like you can't use the render region yet with XPU. At least that's not how you go about doing it. Let's go ahead and close out of that for now, but let's jump over to the materials here. So I touched on this briefly. Go ahead and delete those. We have the material X inside of Houdini 19 now. It's kind of be gonna be used for anything with Karma is gonna be your go-to. You have all these different things that you can play with in here. I just use the standard surface shader 
and then you must use all of the different material x uh, things. So MTL of all of these. So if you want to multiply stuff together, you try and use a multiply node. Just this general multiply node. It's not going to work properly. You must use the material x, and that goes for pretty much every node that you're going to use. So if I look at the absolute value here. So if you want to set the tiling, you can. I uh, use this tiled image. So material tiled image is going to be what you're going to be using for your texture inputs, or at least what I would recommend because it gives you the ability to actually tile it if you need to. And you can just pipe that value into each individual uh, UV tiling option there and change them all at once. Your normal map is going to be a little bit different inside of material X as well. So you need to bring in your normal map and then pipe it into a material X normal map node. And then you'll pipe that into your actual normal map on your, uh, your shader there. So uh, just some interesting little things to go with the material X workflow. Uh, they've got some different contrast nodes and uh, saturation, different color correction type things, but there's not any, if I type in material and then uh, like a correction. There is no color correction like you would see inside of Redshift, which I don't have installed for 19 because it's probably not out yet. But there's a lot better um, nodes for color correction, in my opinion, for things like Redshift and uh, Octane. Any other third-party renders kind of have some better color correction nodes inside of their actual uh, render materials. So. The Material X, you have to kind of chain some of these other ones together, saturation, contrast, play with the multiplies and stuff like that, the different blend modes to get the looks that you're, you're going for. But I don't have anything too complex here in the shaders. Uh, nothing, nothing really complex in there. So like I said, this is kind of going to be your main workflow if you don't want to use your Solaris, uh, like, What's the, what's the word? Solaris setup, I guess. But you can actually jump into Solaris and there's a bunch of new tools that are gonna be in there for world building. So I will be taking a look at that. So some of the scatter geometry, things like that will be a lot easier to do inside of the Solaris context with the new layout nodes and stuff like that. Also, I wanted to take a look here. If I actually, we'll go ahead look at it in this node something interesting that i've found which i don't think has been an issue in other workflows i could go ahead and delete that if you have geometry that is packed so this is packed because it was a for each loop with a copy um, and then it was i was uh, packing it so i could get better viewport performance Something that I've noticed here, go ahead and let that kind of work. If I bring up our render view now and I go to our Karma, it's going to load things up again here, but you're not going to actually see the materials on the grass. It's going to just kind of screw up and, and not work correctly, which I don't think I was having an issue before with pack geometry. It's taking quite a long time to, to kind of go ev through everything. It's got to go one by one through all these meshes. But once it, uh, once it loads up here, you'll see that it's not actually got the correct materials on it. There you go. Red and green, which is just the color, I guess, that uh, Megascans has applied to these by default, which is super interesting. I'm not sure why it's working like that. I did try deleting all the attributes except for the UVs. I tried transferring the, the attributes over to the pack geometry. I don't really know what's going on there. But, so just keep an, uh, an eye out for that. If you're having any sort of issues where your materials aren't showing up and you have the geometry packed, that is probably the cause of it. So super interesting stuff going on here with the new Karma and the Karma XPU renders. Um, pretty pretty quick here. I think this scene rendered out, it took about three to four minutes on XPU, 128 samples without denoising. So with denoising, it goes very, very quickly. 
I still have that, I do. So it should probably denoise here pretty quickly. Um, but it's uh, a ton of fun to play with. I would definitely recommend uh, getting in here and testing it out if you haven't. Um, the XPU, like I said, is an alpha, so it does have some issues with it still. A lot of stuff that it doesn't support, so just keep that in mind. But anyways, that's kind of a, a first look at, at Karma. I was a little confused when I first got into it, but once I started messing around and realized that Material X was kind of the way to, to go, it uh, made a lot more sense and, and started falling into place once I got that down. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out. We'll be diving a lot more into the new update and all of the new features that come along with it, especially the Solar Solaris context and all of the world building tools that come with that. That's something that is super interesting to me and probably one of the most exciting, if not the most exciting feature that I have seen in Houdini 19 so far. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, that'll be coming next week with uh, give me a little bit more time to get that figured out. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you are interested in any other Houdini stuff, make sure you check out the other videos on my channel along with uh, some Redshift and Octane videos on my channel as well. So check those out if you want to. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.